Let's go. Oh, hold on. I have a a phone call. This is weird. Oh, hey, yeah, Dr. Rubin? Yeah, I was just going to call you. Um, I was hoping I could set up an appointment to get my eyes checked out, because all I see is relics on this map. What in the world? What in the world? Relic nothing. You have a monastery. I think it's a, a market, a monastery TC combo, and only relics. Only relics. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had forest nothing. We have had wolf nothing. We have had uh, animal nothing. We will have berry nothing. We will have all the nothing maps possible. But, uh, yeah. This is King of the Hill, free for all. On relic nothing, there's a few trees around. But there's no gold, no stone. I've never seen this before. This community is ridiculous. And let's go. Let's... <laughs> <laughs> this is everything I've ever dreamt of. Let's get all the let's goes in the chat for this nonsense. You guys are crazy. So, I don't even know what the meta game, what the strategy choice would be here. But, uh, I imagine you need to build enough farms to get to feudal with what, what little trees you have. And then, once you get to feudal, you need to build a market to buy everything else you would want. Yeah, the cost of wood is going to be insane. Now, the other thing is, you can only fit so many relics in one monastery. You're going to need to build a lot of monasteries to get all these relics. So, let's introduce the players, shall we? We have Hank the Super Nerd and the Teal playing as the Saracens. In the yellow, we have Malians for Zonda R playing as the um, Malians. Sorry, I, I mess up my order and I repeat things sometimes. <laughs> uh, we have Little Blast in the green playing as the Portuguese. In the gray, we have Tutans for a double N. In the purple, we have Funny Tam Tam playing as the Teutons as well. In the red, we have Jomanal playing as the Slavs. In the blue, we have Official Marvino, uh, my official brother, playing as the Vietnamese. And then in the orange, we have uh, Ultra Shield, who was Teal in that Pilgrims game and did very well. He's playing as the Britons. Purple, I've, I've seen you. I don't know if this is your first time to stream, dude, so I'm trying to answer all your questions um, I don't do a lot on HD because I used to do it a lot on HD and there's far too many drops and there's just simply not as many possibilities on HD. So when we do HD later, we'll do sudden death games and probably capture the relic games, but that's the extent of what I'll do on HD because HD tends to drop more often than not. And it's also there. I mean, if, if Voobly has more features and better performance, there's no reason for me when I'm trying to reach as many viewers as possible with all these like cool wild ideas to go to HD. Um, but if you want to play on Voobly, this goes to anybody, you can play on Voobly for free. It's a free platform and I recommend you check it out. Exclamation mark Voobly is the command. Talks about the free patch and whatnot. And you can join the Discord. And if you have any questions, people in the Discord will help you. Anyway, uh, that's my spiel on that. I've, <laughs> I've said that probably a thousand times over the past year of streaming. I need a big command for it, most likely. Um, so they're selling resources already. Now, Snippy, if you're in the chat, did you make it so there's no max amount of relics? I don't know what the number is. I think maybe you can only put 10 relics in each monastery. So far, we have... Well, that's 10 right there for Hank. I don't know what they'll max out at. Other players have 10. Double N is a little bit behind in the Relic Gathering. So you have a TC, a Market, and a Monastery. I'll combine 10 for every Monastery, yes. Okay. So Hank is doing pretty well. He's going to click up the Feudal first. And he's found some extra trees. This is not played on Explored. So, I guess you just want to buy everything as fast as possible. It is like Forest Nothing except in reverse. In Forest Nothing, you want to sell a lot because you don't have gold. This time, you're going to have a lot of gold. So, you might as well buy all the wood, buy all the food very early. And that seems to be the game plan most people are sticking to. Now, there are five tile 
groups of trees around more towards the center. Uh, <laughs> gotta love this. Official Marvito sends in this one random ass villager to the middle. Don't look at that minimap, kids. That's 18 plus. But uh, I guess he wanted to start that countdown. <laughs> he said, just passing. <laughs> Can we get the T90 passings in the chat for Marvino? Um, this is what everybody sees. They see him. They, I think they saw the villager in there. That's funny. So I think what you want to do is drop the relics you can't put in your monastery right next to your town center. Uh, and that's what most people seem to be doing. Hank was the first to hit Feudal Age. Not buying anything right now. I mean, he has farms, which is great. He's going for his Blacksmith. First to Castle Age is going to have such a big advantage because they can collect so many relics. I want to see what the price is for things now. If you want to buy food, 100 food, it is 216 gold. That is only climbing. You look on the bottom right for this info. If you would like to buy wood, it is 166 gold for 100 wood. So I do understand that people might be watching this and not know much about Age of Empires. Uh, so I'll briefly explain because this does go to YouTube and these, these videos tend to get a lot of views. In Age of Empires, you normally start with a town center. It does not look like this because it's normally just a town center which you create villagers out of. You want to collect wood. Normally there's a lot of that. Then there's multiple gold piles and stone piles. And then uh, standard play has five relics on the map and those relics give you gold. So in this instance, there's no gold, there's no stone, and there's not a lot of wood, but there's tons of relics. So you collect the relics to get gold and you have to buy everything else. If you've seen the forest nothing videos, the forest nothing videos um, show you the opposite where you don't have anything except wood and then you sell that's on hank's view he's saracens so it's cheaper i think saracens is a good pick here i think saracens is a really good pick here he's on his way to castle already yeah what what tahishu uh, is saying is that saracens have the market bonus i'll give you the the read on that Market trade costs only 5%. Hold on. Is that exactly what it amounts to? 5% difference? I never knew the exact number, but basically you get a better trade. If you are Saracens. Alright, so that means Hank can build more monasteries immediately. That means he's going to have a ton of gold coming into the bank. I'm glad that Blue started that countdown early, because the goal here is to control this monument. So while there are plenty of relics, that's only the beginning. You're going to want to fight for the monument to be the last one to control it down to zero years. I did ban Aztecs. I also banned the Burmese. Uh, the, the Burmese pick... They're strong civilization, but I don't know if the fact that they can see relics would have helped them out too much. I would like to see that at some point, just to see what the minimap would look like for them. I allowed their creative freedom, except for Burmese and Aztecs. Will wood, food, and stone price spiral into the thousands? It could. <laughs> I, it could. It is possible. The highest I've ever seen any resource in Age of Empires 2. It was a Black Forest game. This was three years ago. This was back when there weren't a lot of people on Twitch. I just started streaming on Twitch, and MBL was still streaming all the time. And I'm pretty sure... I don't know if MBL will remember this or what, but I'm pretty darn sure that... To buy 100 stone it was 900 gold it was a black forest game where everyone was trying to build bombard towers and so to buy 100 stone it was 900 gold it was ridiculous absolutely ridiculous <laughs> is relic victory turned on yeah let's turn relic victory on i i don't think that'll be an issue <laughs> but can you imagine Trying to buy just one or two Bombard Towers, if that was the price. That's crazy. Right now, the price is... I'll go to someone else's point of view. To buy 100 food. It is 320 gold. Oh, this is awesome. This is awesome. 
Uh, Hank has the lead with the relics because he was the first to hit Castle Age, so he's going to have an advantage building another town center now. He's at 14 relics. Everyone else stuck at 10. No. I don't think Portuguese would be that strong here. I mean, I guess you would also get food with Vitoria. We'd have to test it out because we'll do this again at some stage. But I think that with the amount of relics that are going to be coming in, everyone should be fine. I say that, but you probably want a civilization that has a unique unit or a strong unit that's just wood and gold. Even then, wood will be a struggle, but at least there's some wood here. You don't want to go into something that costs a lot of food, like paladins. No, paladins would be awful here. Because you'd have to research paladin, which would be thousands of food, and then create them as well. I love the possibilities with this game mode. I truly do. It's hard, really hard to say what would be best. Because the price is... <laughs> it's just downright ridiculous. It is just downright ridiculous. Now, once they hit Castle Age, they could attack one another. I still think it'd be best to focus at home. But they could attack one another. Hank has 20 relics now. Let's watch how fast his gold comes in. Look at that number. Look at that. He's getting 20 gold every game second, pretty much. And now he's buying stones because he wants a castle. Yeah, monks would be a great move because it's just gold. It's very hard to micro monks, though. That's the problem. I want to see one player. Well, I want to see seven people go for monks and then one player buy all the food with tens of thousands of gold, buy all the food, and go Hussar. And <laughs> just kill all the monks. <laughs> That'd be so funny. With upgraded farms, 100 wood can give you a lot more food. So won't units need the food? Won't units that need the food be better than wood? Um, no, because eventually you're going to need to refresh those farms and reseed those farms. I don't know where, where you're going to get the wood from. There's a few trees here, but it's only 100 wood a tree. And it's, it's 60 wood a farm. So even if you get the farm upgrades, I think in time, you're going to see very few farms. Great idea. Amazing idea for a map, though. This is, this is awesome. So many freaking relics. Now, see, this is cool. Ultra Shield has built a castle, or is building a castle. So I think he bought all the stone first. Now, he could get longbows. Longbows could be really strong. I don't know if he'll have the food to get all those upgrades or the food to go halberdier, but longbow halberdier, that's only wood, food, and gold. Um, and halberdiers aren't too costly on food. 392 years in this King of the Hill game. Uh, I didn't want to set up Patreon alerts for the stream because it uses people's full names, but uh, to whoever pledged the five dollars on Patreon, thank you, Zach. I won't say your last name on the stream. I appreciate that, man. If you want the alert, I can give you the alert. You just have to ask. Let's see the prices once again. I think people are selling because now to buy food, it's under 300 gold. Pretty sure people are selling. Buying stone is getting more and more expensive. I guess that sounded dumb when I said only wood, food, and gold. But just think about it. You can make a lot of longbows. And then... I mean, I'm trying to think of ideas here, but it's it's kind of difficult to execute, I guess. The, the food thing is still going to be an issue. Because if you're going into halberdiers, you need a ton of farms, which limits your wood supply for everything else. I don't know. How about this, guys? How about you guys come up with cool ideas... I don't say anything that might be proven wrong, and we I talk about what is happening. Right now, oh, this scout is OP. Let's go. Let's go, Zonda. Gonna kill a monk. Is he gonna get this one? Nope, he's not. Hank has just converted it. Hank has 35, 36 relics, 33 for blue, 33 for Tam Tam, 29, 26 for Jomanal and Zonda. Look at Hank's gold again. 
Yeah, wow, look at this. 1,200 gold. One, two, three, four, five monasteries. And still, they haven't even gotten past 10% of the relics on the map. Maybe they got 10%, but... There's still plenty more to go around. There's no meta to this, guys. There's no meta to this. We don't know the strategies that they should be using. We don't see experts play this. We don't know how this should go. I think Hank just went with his unique tech. Madrasa, is that the one that gives his... Yeah, killed monks return 33% of their cost. So I guess Hank could go for monks. Saracens get almost all, if not all, the monk upgrades. Let's see. Oops, I passed it. Oh, I'm an idiot. Here we go. Yeah, he gets all the monk upgrades. Wouldn't wouldn't be a bad idea to go for monks. <laughs> Especially when you get the gold back from it. Uh, Ducky Boy, welcome to the stream, man. Thank you for the prime sub. What if you use monks to make a wall of relics around the monument, then no one can beat you in the middle because relics in the way. Hoppy. That is some next level thinking, man. <laughs> I don't know if that'd be worth it to forfeit 20, 30 relics to wall the middle, but that is hilarious. Can you show the relic income? Um, well, I'll go to achievements because that's easier. Let's see. Relic gold's right there for you. But pretty much top to bottom, Hank with a lot more. Hank, Marvino, and Tam Tam are doing the best. But everybody has over... Everybody except Double N has over 8k relic gold. I can show it on the main overlay, but the problem... Holy monks. The problem with that is it's tough for me to get back to the, the main page, so I don't like to do that. Africa, welcome to the stream, man. This is relic nothing. Uh, there must have been a pause or some lag. Maybe somebody is is downloading the cheat sheet on how to play Relic Nothing right now and, and lagging the game. 41 Relics for Hank, 42 for Red, 43 for Blue, 50 for Funny Tam Tam. Crazy game. Recently bought this game after watching your streams. Any tips for a newbie to multiplayer? Raz, I can give you some very important tips. First of all, you're always going to have something to learn. So if you get frustrated because you lost a game, Dude, that's life. I've been playing this. I played this game for over 10,000 hours, and I still learn something every single game. Um, you're always going to have ways to improve. You just got to learn to have fun with that. Now, best way to improve, learn hotkeys. Every single thing you do when you go through TCs, when you go through mills, when you go through castles and monasteries, have a hotkey for it and work on that for a couple weeks. Every time you go to cheat and click something, use a hotkey for it instead, and eventually you won't even think about it. And uh, the other thing is learn some build orders. If you'd like to take a look at some build orders, you can type exclamation mark build orders. It gives you some places to start. That way your economy will be right. And those are the two biggest things. Oh, Little Blast has gone for Vittorias. So, I completely forgotten about this possibility after it was mentioned earlier. Little Blast is actually lowest in score right now. He only has 23 relics. Um... Okay, type exclamation mark builds instead of exclamation mark build orders. I tried to make it so exclamation mark build orders and exclamation mark builds would work. And I think I might have broke it. Try exclamation mark builds instead, guys. Oh, it's broken. Okay. Uh, remind me in between games and I'll fix that command. Sorry about that. So I want to talk about the Fatorias real quick. Portuguese only get this and it says can build Fatoria in Imperial Age. Costs 250 gold, 250 stone, 20 population, produces... 0.8 I mean there's all the stats for you <laughs> basically it's incredibly slow trickle of resources that you get with Fatorias so while food could be an option or it could be an issue Fatorias will help with that I still feel like the other players are gonna have an advantage Hank is going for what looks to be Mameluke Monk and Onager and getting those relics has really paid off for him does Twitch auto-translate your voice? 
in other country servers. I uh, don't think so. Don't think so. 280 years. Who are you guys rooting for? Funny Tam Tam. He's winning in the relic count right now. One TC. Only 29 bills. That could be a problem for him. But he has so many freaking relics. It is insane, man. It is insane. He's 70 relics soon. He's a 69 right now. 71. He's going to go over 100 relics. Who needs bills, right? Who needs bills? What's the price for resources now? If you want to buy stone, 100 stone is 470 gold. 100 wood is 500 gold. 100 food is 276 gold. Wow. He's going to build a castle in the middle as well. Purple Shark, if... If you are having issues with Voobly, you can join the Discord to ask for technical support. I'm casting a game. I cannot, I cannot answer questions as I'm casting in front of 882 people. Yeah, I can't play tech support and stream at the same time, man. Uh, but if you already have Voobly set up, it's game four. You can just spectate it that way. So how many monasteries does this guy have? He has monasteries everywhere trying to collect relics. I'm crazy multitasking right now. Also, T90 sucks at being tech support. Thank you, Nimino. Yeah, Nimino, uh, there might be someone who needs help in in Discord. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Screw you, Nimino. Screw you. Oh! Holy goodness! We actually have an attack! Oh! Well, people are fighting. Alright, well. I was not expecting this. We have so many monks. I can't figure out what these monks look like. It's been bothering me. They look like something... It's the new monks, and I don't know, like, there's something on the tip of my tongue about these guys. But, oh, we're gonna see some real wallows now. Monks are gonna get converted on both sides. Surprise, surprise. And so far, it seems like official Marvino is winning, and Jominal is just losing track of his monks. I don't think he's wallowing at all. Look at this. Are they red or are they blue? So many monks. And now Jominal is not feeling very good about this. I don't know, maybe these farmers wanted to join the other side because they sensed that they were going to die and they wanted to get converted. <laughs> or maybe they're here as a distraction. Uh, I don't know why he's doing this, but he is doing it. And this is basically what a monk more is. It's a bunch of wololo, wololo, wololo. And that's it. Funny Tam Tam has the middle, 230 years. Uh, we have Mamluks pushing in from Hank on this side, and he also has Siege Onager on the way. I absolutely love Saracen's late game. It is amazing. One of my favorite late game civs, Mamluks, Onagers, Champions, Arbalest. They have so much. But, well, I guess versus Britons, this will work very well. But I, versus other monk civs that get redemption, where they can convert these Onagers, that might be risky. Uh, and skirmishers, a fantastic choice for Marvino as well, as the skirmishers will kill monks nicely. Yeah, it looks like Jominal got the armor upgrade for his monks, which can get his slavs, but it doesn't really matter when they're getting converted. Still, he has a lot more numbers. Jominal has 54 relics versus 61 from Marvino. You're like, hey, my religion's right. No, my religion's right. And then Jominal's villagers were like, I believe his religion. And then they ran to join that side, and then they died to the air of fire. Feels bad, man. Look at the Fatorias from Little Blast. He's raking in the resources. Going with hand cannons. Building another Fatoria. He's not going to have population room soon. What do these take up? 20 population space? Yeah, okay. So one, two, three, four. This will be five. It's going to be 100 population space in just Fatorius. If he gets attacked now, he's dead. The issue is he doesn't have pop space to make military and defense. So he could die to double ends paladins. Now, we should still focus on the middle. 
192 years is not a long time, but we do have fights between Hank and between uh, Ultra Shield. Unfortunately, Ultra Shield has chosen Britons or has random Britons, and I just don't think Britons will work very well versus any Siege civilization, especially when you're lacking all these resources. Luckily for him, he does have 60 relics, though. Well, the monk armor really paying off because these monks just will not die. Jordan23, welcome. Guys, let's throw some salutes out there to Jordan and his viewers. We are in the middle of not forest nothing, not wolf nothing, but relic nothing. Don't don't ask me why. Don't ask me why, Jordan. Good to see you again, by the way. Uh, so, currently one player has 96 relics. Uh, everyone else is above 50, except for Little Blast, who has gone for Portuguese Vitorias. I think, I think Jomel is holding here. Just a lot of Wolalos on this side. We have the Mamelukes and the Siege Onagers fighting. Big engagements. Pretty passive down here. All but relics. <laughs> all, all the resources on this map uh, are gone, except for relics, pretty much. There's a few trees around. Funny Tam Tam, not messing around. Playing the late game. Walling up the middle now. It is King of the Hill, by the way, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Marvino says, in between Monk Micro says, this is the most fun I've had since 30 minutes ago. Wow, must be fun then. Rams were a great idea, in all honesty, from Jominal. Can kill the Trebs easily. Great meat against the Skirms. I want to see Roach's, or sorry, Hank's resources. Look at that. He has 73 relics. Now, the prices will be interesting. If you would like to buy 100 stone, it is 500 gold. Buy 100 wood, it is 580 gold. The prices are ridiculous. And that's for Hank as well. He is Saracens. The food price is not as high as I thought it would be. I think they're able to get farms up. But if this game goes on very long, then it'll be problematic. Because there will be no trees left. The food count all starts with wood. And there's not a lot of wood left. Oh, the Arbalest gonna shred the Mamelukes now that the Siege Onagers are gone. I don't know where these units came from. They came out of nowhere. They're gonna push those Mamelukes away. So Orange is doing a good job to hold. Needs to snag these relics, take them to another monastery. Yes. That monk's not gonna be able to do it. You know, on this side, I think both players should invest into Light Cav. But holy monks! 95 military for Jomino. Look at the amount of monks he has. That's insane. That is insane. We have Jibetos from Zonda. I feel like I haven't talked about Zonda all freaking game. 86 relics for him. He is elite Jibetos. Now these could die really hard to siege, but they can kill everything else quite quickly. Zonda has left Little Blast on his own. Little Blast is one, two, three, four, five, six Vitorias getting Arbacus right now. What is this? What were they saying? I think maybe Blue and Red called a truce. Yeah, I think they called a truce and they're going to go to the middle at 120 years. Well played. I don't have a T90 clap emote, but well played, you guys, to... To agree to disagree on life and religion and move forward. That's a lot of freaking monks, man. That is a lot of monks. Holy shit. They do not see the castles here from Funny Tam Tam. Now, Funny Tam Tam's going with paladins. Now, how do you think that's going to work against 100 monks? Yeah. I didn't want to add a T90 clap emote because I didn't want to give you guys the clap. All right, well, rip these trebuchets. There's still a lot of Arbalest here. And even though these monks don't get a lot of upgrades, they're still getting some conversions. I think, and surprisingly, Orange able to hold with the massive amount of range he can get with Britons. Holding against Siege and Mamelukes. You really need Siege Ram to push Britons. That's the main thing. 104 years. Jominal showed up. He sees the castles. Okay, here come a few Paladins. Ah! Let's go! There's no way. Like, losing these monks is not even a big deal when you have 47 relics and this many behinds. 
Trebuchet is going to come forward. You got to think Purple's going to start losing his buildings, potentially his monasteries then. He cannot fight this with Paladins. Now, he is Teuton, so his, his civilization resists conversions, which is nice. But still, I don't think it'll be very easy for him. Meanwhile, as it looks like there's a pause, Zonda is fighting up against Little Blast. And they're going to be fighting over wood and relics, I imagine. Little Blast, it says he has 148 military, but that's only because of his 120 population space put into the Victorias. Now, Gray is also Teutons. I haven't seen him make much of a move. He has a lot of farms. I noticed that. And 10,000 wood. Could make Paladin. Does have Onager. Alright, well, hopefully nobody died. That would be sad. We only want you guys to die in the game. Orange's Treb Micro is underrated. That's a good point as well. I guess you could have got Warwolf. I didn't think about that. But, still regardless, if Hank had made 30 Siege Rams and Mamelukes, he would have destroyed him. The Siege Rams always kills Britons. Britons don't have anything. They can't do anything against Mamluk Siege Ram. The Siege Oninger kills the Arbalest, so I think it's deceiving at times. You think you need to go for SO, but Siege Ram is the better move. Oh man, here are the Paladins. Funny Tam Tam, he's still going for it. Now this trebuchet is actually being repaired. It takes a while to convert these Paladins, doesn't it? Is the Trep going to stay up? Looks like the Trep's going to stay up. We're only at 84 years, ladies and gentlemen. They're going to have to start pushing purple fast. Now as of now, he doesn't have any units in the middle controlling it, but he is controlling that general area. Oh, holy cow! Holy cow! So many conversions coming in. I guess this is where the pause came in. Should we save and try and get yellow in? No! No! That's why there was a pause. Zonda dropped. Oh, that sucks. Can we get some T90 cries in the chat for Zonda? Feels bad. Feels bad. Sorry about that, Zonda. Well, it's, it's up to the rest now. That means a little blast will will have some time. Maybe he can blast forward. I still feel like now Hank and Orange should be friends with each other. Call a truce. Everybody should push in towards the middle. Right. So many monks here. Purple lost the castle. He's going with his own monks. Trying to convert enemy monks. So many wolves. <laughs> Bamboo internet. Oh my gosh. Haven't heard that one before, Reaper. The Teutons don't get Hussar. They max out at scouts. They don't even get light calves. So, uh, he's going to continue to throw paladins at these monks, I guess, which I don't agree with. I guess he doesn't have too many options. This is 56 years. He probably should start sending numbers towards the middle. Now, Hank, he's going to maybe cut through the stone walls. I'm not sure. Oh, oh, look at this. We have Imperial Skirmishers from Arvino and the Arbalest from Ultra Shield. I don't think this is intentional. They're running into each other by accident. They just need to take down this wall. Like, use the Bombard Cannons or get some Rams over here or something. The lack of Rams is just mind-blowing. Rams would actually do really well versus Monks, too. Here we go. Blue is attacking a part of the wall. It's all they need to do. They need to get in here. Now, these are Teuton castles, but they don't have any upgrades. It's so hard to micro this many monks. It's so annoying, too. Especially against Teutons, because it takes so long to get conversions. Here we go. Hank's starting to push in now. They just need to clear all the monks out in the middle, and then it'll start the countdown over at 100. If you are new to Age of Empires, if you are new to this setting... It is about capturing this monument, and every man is for themselves. Don't you dare friendly fire your unit tank. That could have been bad. Skirmishers coming in here to clear out the monks. Everybody committing for this. Here comes Double N. Double N coming in from the backside with the Lee Teutonic Knights and Paladins clearing out those monasteries. So many relics lost there. A lot less gold in the bank now for Funny Tam Tam going forward. And surely he is going to get cleaned up. He will not have any units left in the middle. And he will... 
be yet another person to go down after going into the middle first. It happens so often. So often. Normally, you go to the middle first, you die hard. Now, hold on a second. This is not over yet. He still has a few units in here. They need to make sure they clear it out. Huge death ball from Hank. Huge death ball from Jominal. From Orange. From Blue. Blue losing all of his traps now. Uh, there we go. It has gone into Hank's favor, actually. And I don't think Hank should leave this area. I think he should stay here. But nope, he's left and he's giving Gray the control. So remember earlier I talked about how Double N had a lot of food. It seems like he farmed a lot. And because of that, he's gonna have food for Paladins. Other people might not be able to make their units because of the lack of food. Now currently the prices, I'm sure you're wondering. To buy 100 stone, it is 762 gold. 100 food, 335 gold. And 100 wood, 879 gold. That has got to be some kind of record. Ah, I see. Only you, you got your uh, you got your affiliate, and you're already trying to to sway people away from the T90 Wilmo. I see how it is. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for the six months of support, dude. Now, purple is pissed off. <laughs> Purple has just dropped some castles in Jominal's space. Jominal doesn't have anything here and starts sending out Teutonic Knights. And Jominal is like, uh, why? Well, you know why. You, you were attacking him, man. You were attacking him. So it seems like the strongest players right now has got to be Ultra Shield and the Orange. In the gray, we have Double N. And then we have Hank in the teal. Um, and I prefer his position. Definitely. Oh! Oh, the monk's going down! Will the Siege Hunter get converted? Most likely will. It's not getting converted! He's not going for the SO! Unreal! Hank, put Trong in the Mamelukes now! He's gonna kill all these monks. Oh, it was going so well for Jominal, but now he's dying in his base. He doesn't have the economy for this because he did not buy the resources he needed early on. <laughs> this is his form of military, just a clump of monks. And uh, Hank... Clearing out a rival he definitely did not want to be bothered by. Now, I've kind of missed the attack from Orange down here. Orange has been pestering Marvino. Marvino's not going to be near as successful here. Big, big losses with the skirmishers. Ouch. And the Longbows will do just fine, considering they have 12 range versus 8. But I don't think they should wait too long here. I think they've already waited too long. I think Purple should also delete his walls. I think you should delete all the walls. That way people can push this. Because that's a lot of numbers from Hank. Hank also has the stables and the buildings around. He has 114 military. His resources, sky high. Very strong resources. Sorry, Orange. You crushed my monastery. I wanted vengeance. <laughs> well, I don't think Orange is too worried about you now, Blue. He needs to push forward and kill the Saracen Death Ball. Arrow slits? Is Orange really getting arrow slits? Did he build towers? Is he gonna build towers? I don't know. These longbows, they have 12 range. They can kill the bombard cannons. They can kill the siege monitors. They can kill the mamelukes. Now, this is really interesting because if you didn't know, Teutonic Knights shred mamelukes. I think 20 elite Teutonic Knights can kill 100. Elite Mamelukes, because Elite Mamelukes do one damage or something ridiculous. Now, it depends on Micro, of course, but if the monks die here for Hank, he could be in deep trouble. 38 years remaining, though. He's gonna need to keep units in the middle. If he has one unit in the middle, he wins the game. Little Blast's not able to push in, really. It's just gray, and it is just orange, and I don't know if they will be able to do this. Now, Warwolf Trebuchets would be so sick here. With Warwolf... I think the splash damage will kill a lot of Mamluks. Teutonic Knights holding up very well here. The Monk's still alive, unfortunately, and they're going to get conversions. That's probably the, the first thing I would have gone for if I was double N, is go for those Monks. But look, Mamluk number's going down. This castle's going down for Hank. Hank is going for it. Let's go. Sending in all of his villagers now. He's got to spam Rams in here. Spam Hussars. Keep units alive. Gray sending in the Paladins. All of these Monks will die. Hank... 
almost top score in this game was at 200 population but in the blink of an eye one hour into the game 20 years to go he's losing everything in the middle 100 population now it continues to drop can he keep units in the middle guys it's just about these villagers and mamelukes and maybe this ram 15 years it is craziness in the middle now I'd love to see Arnch unpack the trebs. I don't know if, if he'll have the time to get a treb shot in. Hank doesn't have much left. He's at 60 population already. He's trying to run with 10 years remaining. Surely he has no chance now. And Hank loses the middle. And now it's between Orange and between Gray. Unbelievable stuff. And now we're going to see the Werewolf trebs come into play from Orange. Arbalest and Longbows do kill Teutonic Knights. They do pretty well against Paladins, depending on where the Paladins go. Little Boss doesn't seem to have the confidence to push forward in that fight. Uh, Monks from Jomanal just defending versus Purple. Purple and him are having a 1v1 right now. Blue can't really contribute, but he's thinking about it. 90 years for Orange now, and maybe he can take it. Now, Hank isn't really out of the game. He doesn't have Vils, but he's not out of the game because of all the resources he has. His economy was mainly relics, so I think he still has a chance to come back here. But can anyone stop Orange? They need to get Rams involved, not just Onagers. You need to have 10, 15, 20 Rams as meat, and then those Onagers behind. But I, what I want to see is a big, juicy Onager shot. Give me a big, juicy Onager shot, please. Come on. Right in the longbows. Orange going to try and run away from this in micro. That's one big shot hitting mainly villagers. There's another big shot. Yes. Is he going to go for the trebs or is he going to go for the arbalest? And this onager has somehow come all the way in here. Boom! There we go. That's what we wanted to see. He's going to wall in his trebuchets. Next level strategies. Seems like he's going for it now. Longbows, monks, villagers, everything comes forward. I think Gray is our only hope. And Gray, I was wondering where he sent his paladins. He sent it uh, towards Little Blast. So, confirmed the Vittorios are not very strong on this map. Market prices, I'll show you that, no problem. Let's see. Well... Marvino has zero food, so he's probably thinking, you know what? I got 55 relics. I'm just gonna buy some food. Well, if he wants to buy a hundred food, it is 291 gold. If he wants to buy some wood, just a hundred wood. 1,128 gold for that. To buy a hundred stone, 858 gold. Those prices are the craziest I've ever seen. It is extremely important to buy resources earlier on in the game. Oh, in come the light cav. They have no defense. They have one defense upgrade. These two guys are going to die so hard. <laughs> At least he's trying, though. At least he's trying. 45 years remaining now. This is looking very good for Orange. Is Hank going to mount a push? Uh, kind of, but I don't know if he'll have the time. Again, no one has gone Sea Dram, which I think might be a big mistake. Okay, now Ram's on the way for double N. I want to take a look at his resources. Still has a lot of food and gold. A purple... Uh, not purple, sorry. Orange could slip up and leave the middle. He only has a few longbows in there right now. Maybe these villagers count. I guess with enough bomber cannons, this is doable, but still, when you have 13 range on a bomber cannon and there's this many longbows with 12 range, it's not the best. But this is where they need to push. They need to make the move now. Orange needs to send everything, I think. He's trying to keep his castle up. He's been using longbows to attack the trebuchets. Only one trebuchet from Gray. Longbows from Hank. Or, sorry, bomber cannons from Hank dying to longbows. Finally, one Siege Ram, at least. 19 years for Ultra Shield. 19 years. Everybody needs to come in now. 
Everybody needs to come in. Now, if you're blue, you're probably thinking, I'm gonna just hope he dies and I can somehow rebounce, come back. Like, a lot of players aren't really gonna wanna sacrifice their units and <laughs> finally, Little Boss comes out here. He has to be careful. He has to be so careful here. Little Boss, what are you doing? Little Boss, Little Boss. Does he really think this is a good idea? All of his hand cannons just get headshotted nine years now. I guess he went for it like I wanted. See Jonagers, bombard cannons now for Hank. They need to clear up all of the orange units. There's not as many as I thought there were gonna be at this stage. But I think, I, I think it'll be enough. Three years now. The light cover here from Arvino. Conversion's coming in. There's not a lot left. Orange is below 100 population. Shoot, Gray. Shoot, shoot. Oh my goodness, that was close. Look how close that was. If there were two more years, I think he would have died. Look at this. Just Vils and uh, these units would have died. That was so very close. Wow, well, uh, that was still an amazing game. Amazing map. Um, I can't wait to look at the achievements with the economy. Well played, Ultra Shield. You did great in the Pilgrims game. You did great in this game as well. Well played, Hank. I mean, Hank really went for it there. I think if there were no Teutons in this matchup, he would have survived. But the Teutonic Knights are just too strong. Well played, everybody. It's obvious to me, we ended this game with some crazy market prices. So you need to buy resources early. I think Jominal and Marvino were discussing the fact that they had no food and no wood. And um, yeah, that really caught up with some players. The players who were fighting in the middle at this stage, they had all, excuse me, thought ahead about that and had purchased everything. All right, so actually, I want to see Little Blast resources. <laughs> now, I guess Little Blast also barely fought this game, but that's a lot of gold. That's a lot of gold. The Vittoria strategy, I think, is weak because you lose so much population space. But maybe at this stage of the game, it should have worked. I don't know. All right, here are the achievements. This will really tell how good the Fatorias were. There's the KD. More kills for Orange. Again, guys, I want to stress, if you're playing against fully boomed Britons, you need to add Siege Ram. Hank could have done that. Um, I guess Gray only had Calf Ram with Teutons, but still, Rams are so important versus Britons, and nobody did that. Here's the eco difference. This is what we wanted to see. Okay, so on this particular map, the Vittorias brought in less gold than the relics. Now, Little Blast could have collected more relics in theory as well, um, but tons of gold for Funny Tam Tam, Hank, Double N, Jominal, Ultra Shield. Lacking, Zonda was lacking gold, but he also dropped at some point. Sorry about that, Zonda. That's really disappointing. Um, let's see. Relic gold. <laughs> uh, and 100 relics captured for Funny Tam Tam. Jeez, man. You'll never see that again. Well, you might, because we'll probably play this again. But you'll never see that on any other map. 100 relics captured. Ridiculous. If Hank didn't attack me early... I would have collected more relics. Well, I think that's the idea in these settings. The idea is to stop your opponent from being in those positions, right? The fees, thank you for the prime sub, man. Don't think I missed anybody. I got a couple people hosting me with one viewer. Not sure if it's a troll. Bellinator just hosted me with four, so thank you for the host, my friend. At market prices, those 3,000 stone from Little Blast were worth 30k gold, though. Yeah, but... 